Tom Commodore of Baseball and the Cape Cod Baseball League Network, Landon Stoller, alongside Mike Cousins. Leading off to the Commodores, the center fielder from Jacksonville State, number five, Todd Cunningham. Todd Cunningham will be followed by Scott Lawson and then Jason Esposito against the pitcher for the Bourne Braves, Drew Eisenstadt from Sandberg. Babson College here in Massachusetts. Okay. First pitch is outside. It's a 1 0 count now to Todd Cunningham, who blasted a home run last night in a 3 for 5 effort that gave the Commodores their first lead of the season. Bounced in the dirt, and it's a quick 2 0 count. Now. The top two spots in the Commodores lineup yesterday have been nope. really productive the, evening. They just get the throw Todd back. Cunningham with the home run. <laughs> so it's um, <laughs> Scott Lawson <laughs> goes 2 low. With a bunch of stolen bases right. and also a run score. The 2 0 count now for Eisenstadt. Oh, that's that. the outside corner for this strike 2 1. Commodores wearing their alternate home uniforms, the maroon jerseys with the pinstripe white pants, Commodores in white across the chest, the Braves wearing their blue uniforms, is that one that one's high, 3 and 1, with their gray pants and new gray Born Braves hats. Pretty stylish, if you ask me. I do like the addition. And I know you definitely made a, a reference to that earlier. I know you like the new hats with a B on it, with a couple of feathers on the go. tail of the B. That one's moved down the left field line, giving chase at the left fielder and Klopchinski in the foul round, but cannot not reach it, and it's a long strike. Full count now to coming back. Is there a name for the uh, Indian could be, could be, could be just with not enough charge feather sticking out of it, or is it just called a fake? Uh, that's all I know. Well, I guess that's, that's what it feels. It's not all of them. Well, we'll yeah. set those Braves defensively. Drew Eisenstein on the mound. Behind the plate is... Taylor Hightower, right side of the infield, Stephen Romero and Pierre LePage on the left, Carlos Alonso and Tom Zabrowski. As that one's a ground ball to first base, the toss over to Eisenstadt is in time, and three to one on the out, one away for the Commodores. In the outfield from left to right, it's Ben. Carlos now batting the second baseman for Miami, number three, Scott Lawson. Scott Lawson now the batter, the second baseman from Miami, who you heard on the Artie's Cafe pregame show. He'll dig in in the left-hander's batter's box and await the pitch from the righty Eisenstadt. It's low, ball one. Inching in is Carlos Alonso, the third baseman, against the bunt attempt. We've already seen Lawson's speed last night, stealing four bases on the game in Orleans. The pitch, and that's a ball ball that misses well, and it's a 2-0 count now to Lawson. Did get that one? Yeah. After falling behind Cunningham, he got him with a 3-2 bit, and now falls behind Lawson, 2-0 and early. Gets Oops. the size of my camera and delivers a call. I messed up your camera here, right? On the outside corner for a call strike, 2-1, uh, dropping the ball as I tell. The shadows here at Bill Fuller Field already stretching almost all the way across the infield. I'd say through maybe 55% of the outfield going from left to right. And we talked about it playing a little bit of a, a factor in it uh, the other day. The 2-1, foul back to the screen, and that evens the count at 2-2. Two two. So that'll tell you that these two fields, Lowell Park and, and both here at Gulf Oil Field, are almost positioned with home plate facing pretty much the same direction when you watch the way the shadows come in here. But it's not too bad for the hitters now because the shadows almost cover the entire infield and it doesn't really affect the batter's eye too much. It shouldn't really be a problem except for right field. That's a sharp ground ball to third base. Up with it is Alonso. The throw across the game is in the Let's see if we can get two in a row. The only time I would really get that think one. the sun yeah. would play a factor. Now batting the DH from Vanderbilt, number seven, Jason Esposito. But with Jones, who's already been here for an entire summer, probably not as big of a problem. Yeah, well, I'm not Jason Esposito is now the batter, steps Scorebook. into the right-handed batter's box. Where's number seven on his back, does the designated hitter from Vanderbilt. He'll step out and now back in and awaits the first pitch. It's a curveball, and that's in there for a quite strike, and it's all in one count. Esposito today, for the first time, being assigned to the DH role. Also, for the first time, looks like he's wearing a piece of protective uh, gear over his left shin, too. Next pitch is another curveball. This time, next to the outside corner, and it's a called strike. So, back to back breaking balls to Esposito. He just finished his freshman year where he batted 287, 442 RBIs at Vanderbilt. The pitch. Check swings and he go. Going the first time. And down one, two, three. Got the corner. 